Hello everyone. We are now starting the session for administration in uh, Nectar. I would just like you to tell me whether you see the, the screen that I'm now showing and uh, if you hear me loud and clear. So if you can just write quickly in the chat that you can hear me and I will uh, start the session immediately. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your, your uh, insights. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to talk about today is how to do some uh, administration stuff uh, in Necto. This will include security, um, security that is being managed by uh, an administrator. Um, Necto has a, a lot of options when re it regards to uh, data security and uh, content security and we will touch all of that. We will also touch the different options of using Necto um, within an organization, uh, outside an organization, um, such as an option to use it in uh, DMZ uh, or in any other um, um, cloud service, as well as using it with the domain users and non-domain users. We will also hear today about uh, an option to create data security dynamic, um, which uh, enables you to, um, to monitor the, the users that, that enter to the system. And we will also touch a bit um, um, the, the actual uh, usage analyzer that uh, we provide together with uh, Necto. So let's begin. First of all, this is the website I gave you in the last couple of uh, webinars. If you haven't participated in, in the last couple of webinars, let me know and I will help you to um, gain some uh, uh, material for that. Also, all of the materials that I'm showing you today will be also sent to you by, uh, um, um, by email and, and will be a, at your service. So when, when I get into one of the Necto servers, I can, I can see that there is a control panel icon over there on the top. If you will get into the same Necto server that I provided you with, you will click on this control panel and you will not see all of the options that I have now. Let's um, quickly move over the different options and see what, what we have here. So except for the definition of data sources, model sets, and infographics, I have the option to do some administration stuff, to create a couple of applications, and we will touch base there, uh, understand what does it mean. We can um, administrate or export, import, change, um, um, change the um, data sources of different workboards, create different charts, roles, users, profiles, and uh, create a specific data security. But more, more than all, also for these categories or for these components, as administrators, we can create things in our, in our public um, data sources or public environments. So this regards to the models, to workboards, to anything that uh, is public, unless it is being defined to be shared with everyone as a default. We can create stuff inside as administrators while other cannot uh, as a default again. So what do we have in the administration area? When I hit the administration area, I see that I can see the information of my license. This license is, uh, is a specific version of Necto. We can uh, um, look at the BI server settings, which is a very advanced de uh, details. These, these details are only being uh, configured by our uh, specialists, and you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, use them. Just for your information, you can literally define the number of data sessions, the number of services that uh, you will see running in the server according to different uh, best practices. And the most important part is the part that I will now show um, about Necto. 
So let's see what, what it is about. First of all, we have authentication type. Nectar authentication type is a, a way to connect to Nectar without, um, without a domain user. So for example, if I have Nectar in a cloud service and there is no domain over there, I will use the security mode of uh, the authentication type of Nectar. So for example, the website I gave you to use for, for your own exercises mm -hmm. enables you to use mm -hmm. authentication type with, uh, uh, with the pop-up that, um, that is uh, initiated in Nectar. It will, it will basically look at users that exist in Nectar that were created inside Nectar and will ask me for the username and password. So in my case, I'm the administrator and I write my password and then I log in. If my password is not correct, it will show me a pop-up that my password is not correct, like it happened now, and then I log in. If I would like to log in to uh, a domain environment, I should use authentication type Windows, which actually means that when I log in into a Nectar server in my, um, in my domain, just logging in to this server will have a single sign-on with my user that I use for, uh, for this uh, uh, domain, with the same user I logged in to, to my computer, and we'll, we'll use it to, to log into Nectar. Now, if this user is not uh, in Nectar, is not being defined in Nectar, Nectar will define it uh, uh, automatically and will give it um, or will attach it to the to the everyone role. So if I look at the role called everyone, and I am going out for a second from the administration, getting into the role section, I will see that when I install Nectar, I have uh, a default for uh, which is uh, which are two roles. One is everyone, and one is admin. So all of the users are automatically, by definition, are attached to the role everyone. Now to admin, for instance, I can add more users that are previously defined. Okay, let's go back to administration and keep on talking about the different methods of using Nectar. So we covered Nectar and we covered Windows, but what is a mixed security? A mixed security is a kind of security that enables you both Windows users and Nectar users. What that, what that means is that whether you are a domain user, you can enter to Nectar, or if you are an outside of the domain user, you can enter to Nectar as well. The only thing you need to pay attention to is to the fact that um, you have Anonymous defined in the different uh, sites of Nectar in the, in the IIS, and that can also be uh, configured by our experts. So if you give access to Nectar which in, inside your domain for outside users, you can do it in this way as well. Now, if you do not wish to do that, you can use two different Nectar servers. And I would, would like to show you an example for that. OK. So this is the first. Um, the, the first thing, what I just explained, you have the Nectar application. This is being connected to a data warehouse using our in-memory engine. Everything is inside the domain. Now, a domain user is entered to Nectar, and when this domain user enters to Nectar, Nectar will automatically create it or create him if uh, this user doesn't exist in Nectar and um, will enable uh, the use of Nectar. If we now have uh, a mixed mode, which give us the, uh, the both options, so uh, a Nectar user will get into our domain by um, a riding on a domain dummy user, just in order to get into the Nectar uh, or to the link to Nectar. And then the Nectar, Nectar authentication will, will pop up and ask for the specific username and password. So the domain user will just enable the, um, the, 
the user to get into the Nectar authentication um, screen. Now, if you don't want to enable this one, you can also use a DMZ. A DMZ or an external domain can also be used in such a way that the internal domain users are not, not affected, but you have another server in the Nectar, uh, in, the, in your DMZ area, which is an external area for your, uh, uh, of your domain. And this Nectar server is only a UI server. It doesn't require any more licenses of Nectar or anything like that. You can, it can also be um, a virtual machine. And this uh, concept will enable you to give access to external users with highly security uh, architecture where we just query the data using TCP IP secure connection. And um, we query in Ecto. Ecto does all of the queries to the data warehouse environment, get back uh, with, uh, with an answer uh, in, in, uh, in an XML um, format. And now Nectar UI presents it to the outside domain user. Now I'm going to complicate it a bit. Another option will be to do the same with highly scalable architecture. So you have a load balancing between your databases and you have a load balancing between the Nectar applications that are inside the domain. You can also have a load balancer between the Nectar UI um, uh, servers. So said that, I hope it's understood that all of these possibilities are available in Nectar for internal users, for external users, for both. We can help you get to know it better we can help you get uh, uh, to establish it in your organization. You just have to ask. Um, I'm, I'm open for, for questions after this uh, session uh, by mail or, a, or any other way. Let's go back to Nectar and talk a bit about the security mode. So regarding security mode, there are a couple of options. One is no security, which is a default security, meaning that when I am um, um, getting into Nectar, I'm, I can see basically, or I, I actually see all of the data that is available for me. So there is no data security that is defined specifically for me or specifically for different users. I can also use um, security that is coming or was created for uh, in, in the OLAP, in the Microsoft OLAP stack. So as you know, Nectar is, uh, is working natively with the OLAP stack, and we also um, show actions that were created in OLAP, sets that were created in OLAP, and of course security that was created in OLAP. Um, so, so when a user, usually um, the OLAP can, ex can accept only log uh, domain users, so when a user get into OLAP uh, or uh, to Nectar, Nectar impersonates this user and, um, and gets only the data that this user is allowed to get. And another option is to define the data security in Nectar, which brings me to uh, the data security area. But before we go there, just to make sure you understand, we now have two, two options. One that is um, on top of the authentication method how we authenticate in Nectar, or uh, whether it's a Nectar user or a Windows user. The other is the security mode, how the security is being, uh, the data security is being done in Nectar. All of the other things um, are less, uh, less important to talk of because we, we usually do not change those unless being told. Uh, the only thing is the, um, uh, administration email and the SMTP server which enable the notification services. So if you would like to use the notification services in Nectar which enables the user to send or to schedule his own notifications then it can be done by defining these things. Let's talk a bit about uh, import roles and import users. We can import roles from a specific OLAP data source. 
if these roles exist in the OLAP data source, so we just import them. And we can also import users um, from a CSV file. So instead of uh, waiting for, for users to get into Nectar, and Nectar will create them automatically, if they are domain users, we can just uh, bring a list of users into this um, location. And um, we, can, we can show later how, how to do that. So I will send you this uh, kind of CSV file, um, writing that down, just to make sure that um, you have it if you need it to load users. Um, there are two types of uh, users. One is the domain users and the other the, is the Nectar user. Both can be loaded from here. So instead of creating one by one, you can load them in a batch. Now, going back to the, to the general menu, I would like to talk about the things that you will usually use. So all of the uh, uh, profiles and application which enables you more advanced features will not be uh, discussed today. Basically, this will mean, uh, if you would like to investigate it more um, um, later, this means that um, I can create a specific or specific behaviors for specific roles. And that regards to um, the modeling, which is uh, available here in profile. So specific roles can load up to certain amount of roles in uh, the Nectar modeling, the Nectar in-memory modeling. You can define it from here. And from the applications, you can define whether data security works for a specific role or not. Let's talk, just before we get to the data security stuff, which is important by itself, let's talk a bit about roles and users. We will start with, with users. So I'll get into the users area. Now I have three different uh, groups. One is Nectar. These are users that were created in Nectar. So these are Nectar users. I created all of you uh, in, in, this, uh, um, in this group. Another, these are the local users of the server. So the server name in this case is Nectar UK. We gave this name because uh, this server is uh, located in uh, Amazon UK. It's a cloud server. And um, this uh, Nectar UK server holds a local administrator and a user called Darkadi, which is our IT guy. We also have um, domain users. And, um, and this domain user is uh, administrator in this uh, domain that we have in the same environment. So we covered that. And now I would like to show you how I'm creating a new user. So I'll get to Nectar, clicking here. Say I would like a new user to be created. I'll name it um, webinar user. I'll give it a small password. Hit OK. And now this user is being created. I can attach a picture to this user. I can upload my own picture. I can also, if it's a, a domain user, this picture should be uh, taken automatically from one of the pictures field in my, in my um, exchange folder. If it's not a domain user, I can add a lot of things, like what is the, the first name of this user. So this is my first name and last name, and by email, etc. Title, division, everything is, uh, is available here. Also in the, in the CSV that I will send you, it is also uh, available. If this user, again, is a domain user, most of the fields, including the password, will be um, uh, grayed out for you guys, since uh, they are being updated from, from the actual um, uh, domain. Now, after I created the user, I can say whether it's activated or locked. By the way, all of these users definitions, all of the way we create users can also be done dynamically using code. So, for example, I can see what happens uh, in the backend by using a profiler or any other tool that, um, that uh, will tell me what SQL query is being written to the Nectar server. And then, using this SQL query, I can create users for my own application. So, for example, if I have an OEM with, uh, uh, with Nectar, 
and uh, and I would like to create users in the, the creation of users in my application will create other users uh, in Ecto or the same users in Ecto with same password etc I can also do that for my application very easily so um, I just wanted you to know that we can attach a, a topic to a specific user so uh, we can literally tag it and we can also say who his friends are he can later say it uh, himself or define it himself then after we do that we save this user for later use so this user will now have a uh, username and password and everything a creation of users like everything else is being saved here on the top and we can also create a user by using the magic stick okay going to roles we can now talk about um, the different roles that we have so how do I create a new role let's hit here and say new role let's call it webinar role hit the OK button I'll click plus and now I can say that all of these guys here are the um, the roles uh, or are attached to the webinar role and I'll hit the save button now what this this action affects currently it doesn't affect anything since I only attached them to a role and I didn't do anything with this role what can I do with this role so that's an, an interesting question what I can do with this role is to attach it to a certain uh, data security object for instance so for example I can create a data security object now and let's call it um, new we we'll call it a webinar data security so that's an object of data security we can say what it affects so for example I can say that I would like it to be or to use a Necto security and the scope of it will be um, Necto models we can also just um, select a Necto model and apply it now we haven't done anything yet because the, this object is only um, created we didn't define anything in it we just defined the scope and um, nothing is attached to it so let's do the connection we created the role let's attach it to this specific data security so I would like to attach a role called webinar role to this data security now we have the connection but still we don't have the connection to the data itself so when I go to data access rights hit the plus button I can now look at the Necto 15 demo and say I would like to see one of the views so I'll understand what I'm doing or what this user is able to see um, more or less so you can see some data here and after doing that I can define um, a dimension which will be secured so for example let's do this for um, specific products or specific dates let's say I would like to see only 2015 or 2014 let's say just a couple of quarters now this doesn't make sense so I'll do something else I'll just define a product let's say that this um, um, salesman that enters to the to Necto can only look at cameras hitting OK I can allow drill down I can say that this member that was selected it should be hidden or anything else or not drill down just show it or even hide the entire dimension and then I apply it now I save this object so what did we do we created an object we define the scope of the object so everything that is connected to this Necto model or to this uh, OLAP model will be affected and now only one role is attached to it I can also create another or attach another role or users to this um, to this uh, security to this data security object 
Now, when this user will get into one of the workboards, it will uh, automatically get restrictions or will only see what he has to see according to, to the defi different definitions. Now, if I go back to the workboard area, I will save this one. If I go back to the workboard area, and I will look at the Necto 15 demo, I will hit the sales analysis workboard. This is what the administrator will see. So you will now see um, a couple of uh, infographics and a couple of tables and, and uh, charts that will show you, first of all, what a, an admin user will see. And as we discussed, this end user that we just created the data security on top will see only two of these, um, two of these products. Now, in order to further use the roles, I can also define which folders a specific role will see. So I can now say that to this folder, I can share it with a specific role like the webinar role. So now remember, we have a definition that this webinar role can get into one of Necto folders. But the data security is much stronger. It will say, he, it can, it, it will literally say, okay, this guy can enter this folder, or this everyone that is attached to the role can enter the folder. But when they get into each one of these workboards, they only see data that is coming from um, uh, from the definition that they have in the data security. So both are working here. We have content security on one hand, and we have the data security on the other hand. Now just pay attention to something that, that uh, usually um, people in the beginning do, do not understand. As a default, Nexo is installed or uh, uh, comes with uh, a pack of features that enables users to demonstrate it to other users uh, in order to um, um, to understand Necto better. So it enables a lot of work on the public environment, even if you are not an administrator. For example, if I look at the sharing options here in the public environment, I will see that everyone can see the public environment. So if you are in a production, of course, you might want to um, delete everyone from seeing the uh, public environment. Okay, and then just define it on the folders that you would like them to, to, to look at. So everyone can be, def can be defined on the um, different folders that um, you would like them to see or just specific roles on specific folders. Instead of just having everyone here and then sharing with, um, with a deny or hidden, which is a negative approach and they don't like it, the best practice is to define positive things. So, for example, if I define webinar role as read on a specific folder, I know that it's readable for this specific role. Um, but on the public, I don't define anything for, for everyone. Okay. Saying that, we go back to the control panel and we continue our search with regards to um, administration options. So let's look at the workboard area. In the workboards area, there is no difference whatsoever between the workboard environment, what I see here, and this guy over there. But the only difference is my options. So when I hit a specific folder or a specific workboard, I can see more options in regards to the definitions of this folder, to the definitions of this, um, of this uh, workboard. So I can share it as well as I can share it in the workboard area, but I can modify the connection for all of these workboards. So when I hit modify connection, it will do it for all of the marked workboards. And also I can um, export or import workboard with, with all of my data. So for example, if a workboard is being exported, it will be exported together with the specific model this, that this workboard is being based off, 
the specific data set, if it's uh, an Excel file, a CSV file, etc., will also be exported, and also um, a specific uh, infographic that is attached to this machine. One last thing I would like to show you today, and then I will give room for, for some questions that you probably have, is uh, the ability to use data security with the uh, ASPX. I just want to show you where, where it is located. Now, instead of just creating data security manually like I did, and for each role define a different object of, of uh, security, we can just define one object of security that is using an ASPX file, a web service URL file. We have a, a flow for how to create it and how to do it. And what, uh, what this thing is doing, it is calling a, a, a security that is being defined whether in a web service or in a table. And now I'm going to show you how this one is being defined. Um, Let's give it some more room. Okay, hope you see it well. A user enters into Necto. Necto will um, will look whether an ASPX is being defined as a as a mandatory for everyone. Like for the in the data security, I will put share with everyone, so everyone will have to move through this ASPX. Now this ASPX folder or this ASPX file we look for the users that enters the, the login details inside the Necto database and then it will recover the security that is being defined for this specific user. It will grant the privileges, the relevant pri privileges and will give access to Necto with the relevant privileges. Now in the database of Necto we are only talking about one table that has two fields, the username that is being provided by, um, by Necto. So Necto will, will pass this parameter to the ASPX um, file. And uh, the data security that is being defined. This data security is being defined in the MDX language. So whether you have hundreds of users, you, you just have to make the proper security for each one of these users or each one of these roles, a Necto will, will work accordingly. So you will not have to, to do one by one manually in, in the Necto UI. You can just create a, a, a process that creates this table for you and, and use it. Now, um, please, the, the line is open for questions. Please write your questions on, on, the, um, on the questions pane on the chat and I will be happy to answer you in the next 10, ten minutes. So first question is uh, by Ray Mangel. I was away last week. When you get a chance, can I get the material sent? So as I said in the, in the beginning, um, you guys can just write me an email with, uh, with regards to last uh, webinars. Uh, we had a very good uh, couple of webinars, one on uh, advanced analytics, another on basic analytics, one uh, we had on how to evaluate BI tools, and the last one was um, about uh, making the most out of your BI environment. So we'll be pleased to send it over for you. Just uh, reply my email uh, that I will send after this uh, webinar. Any other questions that you have, guys, please uh, write it in the chat. Okay. If there are no questions, I would like to thank you, guys for participating in, in the um, webinar on uh, administration in Necto and security. If you have anything specific, anything that I didn't answer, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer for you. Take care. Bye-bye.